In June 1994, several of us got together with this neat idea that we could create our own version of DOS and just give away the source code. And on June 29, 1994, I announced what turned into the FreeDOS project. And that's 31 years ago today, as I record this on June 29, 2025. And I thought, what better way to celebrate the anniversary than by showing how to install FreeDOS. Now, I've done other FreeDOS installation videos, uh, but I haven't done one for FreeDOS 1.4 yet. Now, we released 1.4 back in April of 2025, so it's been out for a little while. But if you haven't installed uh, 1.4, this is what it looks like. Now, I'm running on a Linux machine here, and I like to run uh, FreeDOS in a virtual machine. And the virtual machine I use on Linux is called QEMU. And the downside, QEMU is entirely command line driven, and that means you have to configure the entire virtual machine from the command line. But I'm going to use a lot of defaults here. On the plus side, that does mean you can configure pretty much anything you need just by adding different command line options. I'm going to start by defining a new virtual disk. So I'm going to do a QEMU image, and then I'm going to give it the command create. And I'm going to use a uh, disk format called QCOW2. You can also do uh, other uh, disk images like RAW and VDI and VMDK, but I'm going to use QCOW2 and I'm going to do uh, freedos.qcow2. And then how big do I want this uh, hard drive image to be? Uh, most of the time I actually do 500 megabytes and that allows me to uh, install quite a lot of stuff including uh, you know compilers and, and games and things like that. For this video, I'm just gonna do a, a basic install. And so I don't need a very big disk. And in fact, even 120 megabytes is more than I need. But the machine that I used when I uh, wrote FreeDOS back in 1994, uh, I think I had 120 megabyte hard drive. So let's go to do it with 120 megabyte hard drive. And so now we've created our hard drive image, and now I can boot the FreeDOS 1.4 installer with that image as the hard disk. So I'm going to do QEMU system uh, I386, and I'm going to make sure I enable the Linux kernel virtual machine. You don't actually have to do that, but if you don't, it's going to run really slow. <laughs> and so we're going to do uh, also the CD-ROM is going to be the FD14 live. And HDA, that's the first hard disk, but we need to give it the image that we just created, freedos.qcow2. And then I'm going to tell it to boot using order equals D, and that means it's going to always boot the system uh, from the CD-ROM drive. And so I hit return on that, and you can see it instantly boots my virtual machine. Uh, if you want to just try FreeDOS without installing it, you can use FreeDOS in the live environment mode. Uh, I'm going to actually install it. Uh, if you've installed it and you uh, have the CD drive defined as part of the machine, uh, you'll probably keep getting this menu and you can use boot from system hard disk to actually boot your uh, hard drive. But we're going to go and install to hard disk. And so hit return on that. And so now we're booting FreeDOS. And you can see we have an illegal partition table because it, the hard drive is empty. And so what's my preferred language? I'm going to use English, but you can just use the arrow keys if you want to use a different language. You can see it just changes the display uh, immediately. Hit return on English. And yes, I definitely want to install uh, FreeDOS 1.4. Now, we don't uh, have a partitioned hard drive yet, and so we need to partition that. And so we can just go up here and say, yes, partition the hard drive. And it doesn't take very long, uh, but FreeDOS, like every other DOS, uh, reads the partition table exactly once, and that's when it boots up. And so if you uh, add, change, delete partitions on the hard drive, you have to reboot for FreeDOS to recognize that. And so that's why it says you have to reboot for the new partitioning scheme to take effect. So I'll hit yes, and that will reboot. And I'm gonna go back down to install the hard disk. And then it's gonna prompt me again for the language. And then it's gonna pick right up where it left off. So preferred language is English. Yes, I wanna continue with the installation. And I now want to erase and format that hard drive, hard drive C. And so it doesn't take very long. And so I'll just press a key. And now it's going to gather some information and I need to select my keyboard layout. I'm using a US English keyboard. 
And then what packages do you want to install? So by default, it's going to let you install the full installation, including applications and games. And if you have a, a larger hard drive image uh, or just a larger uh, physical hard drive, if you're installing this on real hardware, uh, that's that's a great one to do because it gives you lots of different things you can do uh, immediately with FreeDOS, including a lot of cool games to play. I only gave it a 120 megabyte hard drive that I, I'm going to definitely fill that up if I use a full installation. So I'm going to do plain DOS system. We also include source code. So as you see, we also have plain DOS system with source code and full installation uh, with source code. But I'm going to just do plain DOS system. And yes, I'm ready to install FreeDOS 1.4. So while that installs, let me talk a little bit about FreeDOS 1.4. A lot has changed since FreeDOS 1.3. Uh, developers have been adding features and fixing bugs and just doing all kinds of different work. And we have a bunch of neat things in here, including uh, an updated version of Freecom. That's our uh, command shell. Uh, so 0 0.86 has a bunch of new fixes, uh, compatibility improvements, translations. Uh, so thanks to Jeremy and Tikachia and Mir and Andrew, Yushi, Berend, Jiri, and a bunch of other people for their work on that. Uh, MTCP is an updated version of our TCP IP stack uh, so that we can put FreeDOS on a network. So thanks to Michael for that. Uh, FD help, that's the content of our main help system. And so version 110 has been rewritten from scratch by Willie and it has a bunch of translations to other languages. So thanks to all the people who did translations on that. And then also we have VSB HDA and SBEMU that does sound. And so these emulate a sound blaster on more modern hardware. So if you remember, DOS doesn't have a hardware abstraction layer. And so games and things talk directly to hardware. So if you don't actually have a sound blaster card, you might try installing uh, VSB HDA or SBEMU. Uh, if one of those doesn't work, try the other one, vice versa. Uh, so now that I've finished installing FreeDOS, let's go ahead and, and say yes, reboot now. Um, and your system will now reboot. And so I, I'm still using that uh, QEMU definition. As I said, you can now boot from system hard disk, or you could uh, do this a different way and uh, use boot from uh the c the c drive uh so boot from system hard disk would absolutely bring you back into freedos but let me show you the other way that i, that I can do it and so i'm just going to stop this virtual machine and i'm going to do qemu system i386 actually you know what i can just uh, repeat the command line i have up above except now instead of boot order equals d i'm going to do boot order equals c and so now it's going to boot from the first hard disk and so I will uh, zoom that. And here we are booting into FreeDOS. So we've got a lot of cool things in this, as I was just saying. Uh, we have some things that didn't quite make it in, uh, like we don't have a new kernel yet, because as you might guess, the kernel is a big deal. <laughs> we definitely want to make sure that gets uh, tested. Um, we have some other programs like uh, BlowSec, the text editor, that, uh, that just got released too late before we could include it in FreeDOS 1.4. So if you ever need to, um, uh, you know, if you want to try those programs, you can actually uh, download our monthly releases, our test releases, and install those. Now, I've only installed a uh, plain DOS system on here. And so you can see that uh, I'll just do a, a wide uh, directory. And so you can see I've got 112 megabytes free on a 120 megabyte disk. So I've got quite a lot of room uh, left to go on here. And if I wanted to install some programs uh, on here, I could do FD impuls, and that is the uh, package installer. And so if I hit return on that, as long as my CD drive is uh, has the uh, the live CD or the bonus CD, uh, you can see I can go in down here and I can actually uh, use the arrow keys to install different things. And so applications, I could install any one of these applications. Uh, archivers, we have different archivers that you can use. So we've included this on the first uh, 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 live CD. So that way you can actually install these different archivers. There's the base, that's everything that we have. The different device drivers, uh, that I mentioned. And so you can go down here and look at all the different device drivers that we have. There's SBEMU. And then a little further down, we've got VSB HDA.
different games that you can that you can install uh, different networking you can install different sound tools you can install and then we have various uh, basic tools that you can try and then various uh, unix like tools and so you can try to you know install these if you want to experiment with some different things the bonus cd has a lot of other cool stuff as well uh, and so i'm just going to uh, do okay let's do the tab to get down to okay and I'm going to leave it at that. So thanks to everybody who is uh, helping out with Fridas. You are uh, really making this community a, a great place to be. Uh, I'm going to also comment this uh, version was much smoother because Jerome Shadell, our distribution manager, has this idea after Fridas 1.3 about doing a rolling test release. And so this 1.4 came from these rolling test releases that we all got to try these new changes as they made it in. So thanks to everyone. Give it a try. Go to our website. Uh, thanks. Before, before I go, I should uh, thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. So thank you so much for your support. And thanks again to our gold supporters, sponsors, and gold sponsors. Visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Mastodon. And consider supporting me on Patreon. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.